Hello YouTube, D. Baudry here. Uh, welcome to EV Components Review. On the bench is a FAR driver, QS96250. So 96 battery amps, 530 amps phase, according to the sticker right here. Um, the QS versions, I believe, are Hall, and the ND versions, I believe, are Sine Co sensors. I think that's how that works. All right, uh, this controller was all potted. And once I got the lid off, I was happy to see that it was all the flexible potting rather than hard potting, like say a Suron or Teleria controller. As a result, I was able to depot this thing with very, very small amounts of damage. Enough so that it's going to work as is. Uh, yeah, there's things about this that I don't like particularly well, and other things that are fine. Uh, I would have to say, just general build quality, Votal has the win by a lot uh, over Far Driver. Um, yeah, but there's uh, some winning aspects of this that Vodal doesn't have too. Alright, so uh, this is a fairly standard cable kind of a thing from you know Chinese manufacturers. Uh, these are water resistant and so it's this, it's got a silicone seal in it. But then like the Bluetooth cable, that's completely not water repellent in any way. So it's like, well, okay, great. So your controller drowns, uh, you know, as you're riding through a rainstorm or whatever and you'll lose phone connectivity to your controller. Uh, yeah, that, that should have been waterproof too. <laughs> and it's not, you know, it should have a seal around it. Uh, these silicone grommets, they were not siliconed in place. I did that, so you can see my not very good job. I, I uh, forgot about it and I didn't wipe up the silicone on here uh, after I plugged these in place and then when I finally got down to it, it's like, oops, it's all set up, never mind, they're there. But uh, yeah, these are not, secured in place, uh, or they were not from the factory. In fact, the controller was put together and then these were slid down over top of the aluminum studs after the fact and not sealed in place. Uh, so yeah, meh, not so great in that regard. Uh, this aluminum studs are proud of the silicone by about an eighth of an inch, uh, so about three-ish and a half millimeters. And then you've got the screws that also didn't come with it um, that go in. They're M6, but I don't know if they were Allen head, Phillips head, hex head, whatever. Uh, I didn't get them. Um, so anyway, yeah, I bought this controller brand new. It's been in my possession uh, a week. Anyway, yeah, no screws in it. That was weird. Um, and with them being proud like that, then like battery plus to battery minus, well, that's a short waiting to happen. Uh, that's a blown up controller right there. Uh, yeah, so not having any kind of protection over all this stuff. Uh, Vodal wins on that one for sure. Uh, at least like with the ASI Back 8000 or like with, um, uh, you know, like the EBMX X9000, they have fins between all this stuff so that, you know, shorting and stuff is much harder to do. But definitely like the plastic cover over everything. And they could have done that here and they didn't. Uh, yeah, that would have been a win on that regard. Uh, this connector right here. There is that silicone seal here, so uh, that's fairly water resistant. You know, it can go through a puddle or, you know, get hosed down. It'll probably be okay. Uh, and, of course, everything was all potted like this. So pretty much waterproof-ish as far as that stuff's concerned. They were completely depending on the potting, though, for waterproofing. I can tell you that much. Uh, underneath the lid, so there is... No silicone seal here. There never was. I didn't lose it. It just wasn't here. Uh, so they were 100% depending on the potting to seal this shell to the aluminum base. And, uh, you know, at least like EBMX, as crappy as though, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, EBMX definitely has an O-ring in there. K.O. Moto, despite as crappy as they are, uh, at least they had an O-ring in here. And they didn't even bother with far driver. Uh, this is ABS plastic. It is not uh, glass reinforced polyester, like say the Vodol controller. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Vodol has got the win when it comes to build quality for sure over this. Uh, ABS is fine. Um, you know, like uh, EBMX, Kamoto, those are both ABS as well. Uh, you know, mold plastic quality is reasonably good. Uh, don't really have a problem with that. There was no silicone here at all uh, down to these pins, so that did not seal up in any way. Uh, they were completely dependent on the the potting to flow around underneath here to seal these you know holes to around those pins so this is just hard plastic in here there's no like grommet or silicone seal to seal at the bottom of these pins it was totally supposed to be the uh, 
potting that was going to do that, and it didn't do it. <laughs> it's like this corner out right here was completely not soaked in potting uh, when I pulled this apart. Anyway, uh, yeah, some attention to detail is not so great um, in this far driver controller, but uh, yeah, other things about it are pretty good. All right, so here you have the uh, the main assembly, and uh, this little board right here, uh, this little daughter board that plugs in, I believe that the only difference between like an ND controller and a QS, which is the Hall version, is this little board. I'm pretty sure it's the case. Uh, I have an ND version coming in a few days, and then I'll know for sure. But uh, I don't see any evidence otherwise that separates the Hall version from the Sign Coast version of the controller, um, other than the potential of this little board. So let me pull this up. Anyway, uh, if this was all potted, uh, it wouldn't matter that it's just held down by its pin headers. But uh, yeah, uh, I would have liked to have seen something securing this down, but with the potting on there, it's really not a matter, not going to matter. Uh, you can see it's glossy. It's because I have added conformal to it. I'm gonna run this thing without potting. I've done all this effort to clean it all up. So yeah, I'm gonna run it, uh, just coat everything in conformal to deal with whatever possibility of water incursion might happen because there's no silicone seal on the lid. Uh, and I've already pot I've already uh, coated this in conformal, hence the shininess on it. Uh, this board, there's a few TVSs right here for some of the inputs. Uh, you got a buzzer. Um, there's a small resistor, which is clearly an add-on. I don't know why that's there. Uh, and that's pretty much everything there. So, yeah, there's the pin headers on the bottom. That's it. And they plug in, of course, right here and here. Uh, here is your main DC to DC converter, converting battery voltage down to 12 volts. Uh, you have a MOV right here. Uh, all this stuff was potted, right? So it didn't really matter. Uh, uh, that that MOV, I bent it over and put some silicone, uh, electrical grade silicone underneath it to secure it to the board. And uh, this little resistor right here was the same way. You know, it was all supported in potting. And since it's now not, I put a little bit of silicone on that to hold that down so that they couldn't break off. Uh, all these capacitors, the same thing, all that stuff right there, I did the same thing. So, like, on there, you can see all the black stuff, you know, around here and here. That's silicone from me. And, like, those uh, little parts right there, yeah, you can see where it's all on those. That way they can't move. They're all pretty much secured in place, and they're never going to vibrate and break off their own legs. All right, so... Uh, Right here and here are two current sensors for phases, and then this third phase doesn't have one. Uh, we've seen the same thing in like the uh, KO Pro controller. Uh, I've probably run into something else, I just can't think of what it is. So there is some aspects of this thing, like these two current sensors, that would lead me to believe that this is FOC. I know that Far Driver says it is, but there should be evidence of that. And like in the application for setting up the controller, the evidence is pretty scant, okay? <laughs> There's not a whole lot of evidence there that says, oh my god, yes, this is FOC control. Uh, and so I'm looking for it in hardware too. And the only other thing I can find is these two current sensors for the shunts, or the phases rather. Um, whereas like say the Voto controller, I can say pretty emphatically that that's probably sinusoidal because it's only got a current sense shunt off of battery minus, not on the phases. But that's not also a dyed in the wool thing either. It's like nuclear controllers, the only place it has current sensing at all is on battery minus, and it is in fact an FOC controller. So uh, talking to VESC engineers about this, they're unsure. Uh, this is a good sign that it's FOC, those two current sensors, but in the software it's missing a lot of things that would make me say absolutely it is. So, yeah, me and the uh, VESC engineers were scratching our head. We don't know. Uh, yeah, there's. I, I don't just trust somebody saying something is something. I want proof of it, and I'm not finding enough of it to say yes for sure. All right, so right here is your DC to DC circuitry for the main battery power coming in. There's the inductor, and there's the capacitors for that, and there's the buck chip for that. Uh, this is a dual voltage system, so that's a 7805 linear regulator for 5 volts. So everything on here either runs on 5 volts or 12 volts. Uh, so probably the gate drivers are 12 and the CPU is 5 volts. And this is a Giga Chips, uh, same brand of chip as the X9000 uses from EBMX, just a much lower powered version. Um, there's probably FOC libraries for this, which would lead me to believe this possibly is FOC. It's definitely not going to ever run VESC because, well, that little guy doesn't have the horsepower for that. Uh, 
These two current sensors, you know, this is a uh, ring basically of little thin laminations and then a hall in the center of it. Uh, you know, here's all your large filter capacitors. Uh, back here, there is a little op amp package. And that's pretty much everything that's there. Let me pull this up. Yeah, everything is guided around these aluminum studs. So it comes up nice and easy. Uh, on the bottom side of the board, there is not much here to look at. Uh, the things to note are you have this uh, RF plane right here, and I like to see that. Um, and then you've got battery minus and battery minus here. Uh, it's not a current path. It's just going up for ripple filtering to the capacitors. Battery plus, however, is a current path. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> And, you know, that really should just be for ripple filtering, but it's a supplemental current path that's down here. And I don't like seeing that. I didn't like it on the uh, KO Moto controllers, and I don't like it seeing like seeing it here either. Uh, you shouldn't do it that way. So, anyway, here's the power stage. Uh, these aluminum standoffs are not awesome. Uh, they should have at least used brass. I do like the fact that they're one solid machine piece, uh, that way you can crank on them, you can't twist them off, and they are not soldered down to the board because you can't solder aluminum anyway. Uh, instead they are screwed down, which I am taking out now, with two M4 screws to the heatsink. And then they have a nylon washer underneath them to electrically isolate from the uh, stud to the aluminum. Uh, so this is very secure. Uh, whatever screws they had intended from the factory, which I didn't get, um, would have been fine to crank on them because this is all one solid machine piece of aluminum. Uh, definitely would have preferred that to be brass. Uh, that's not super cool. Uh, here is battery minus and it goes through this bridge and then you've got this nice piece of copper for battery minus bus. Um, because this is here and not like over here where it ought to be, you know, it's a longer current path for battery minus. And it also compromises the battery plus bus. Uh, because there's no copper here on battery plus and a third of it is right here right below battery minus where you can't reinforce it So yeah, this is suboptimal. It's not a balanced design battery minus is nice and strong and battery plus is weak uh, And this is still strong compared to like say Kyomoto because this is about a inch wide piece of copper trace right here for battery plus and then it gets much thinner over here. So it's better than like say the Kyomoto stuff, but it's still not great because it's not balanced. Battery minus shouldn't be here. You shouldn't need this bridge. The battery minus studs should be like right there. Um, yeah, so I don't like that. I know why they did this and it's basically here. They would have had to redesign a hole right here for this stud to come up through in order to put battery minus right there. And so the solution was, oh, well let's just weaken battery plus and stick it up there instead where we have room at the back of the board. So, yeah, they made some compromise choices and as a result they made this an unbalanced design. Battery Plus is much weaker than Battery Minus. And that meant they also had to do this. Which is again, just do it right guys. How hard is that to do? Um, yeah, anyway, uh, you've got some ceramic caps here which is good and that's probably a decent amount for that side of the board and underneath the bridge you can see four more here. So probably high frequency filtering is going to be okay with this board. Uh, I would like to see a few more in here and in here, but still that's not so bad in that regard. I uh, definitely like seeing all the copper here, um, and it should also exist all the way across the top of the high side MOSFETs for battery plus. And yeah, that's no good. <laughs> definitely don't like battery plus being compromised because of placement of battery minus or needing this little bridge. Uh, that's a nice beefy bridge. Yeah, uh, Kyomoto could learn something from this. They should use bridges like that if they're going to do their stupid bridge thing. Because that's a beefy bridge. That's not going to be a problem. That's not a current bottleneck. That's not going to be a hot spot. But still, you shouldn't have the bridge anyway. <laughs> Battery minus stud should be right here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop harping about it. Definitely don't like these aluminum pieces. I wish that that was uh, copper or brass. Also, aluminum reacts with copper. Uh, so, to resolve that problem, they've got a little bit of tinning down here on all these uh, so that the aluminum cannot react with the copper. And if that wasn't there, then you would create oxides between the two, in which case the resistance would go up significantly. Yeah, the solution is make these brass, and then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and that would also lower the resistance of your standoffs considerably. And they're aluminum. You know, at least these things here, uh, those are some kind of a brass material. They, they look silver like this is, but they're not. Uh, and they are soldered down. 
Uh, I don't care that these are not soldered down. That would have been cool if they were, and if they were brass, they could have been, uh, and that would have lowered that, that uh, butt joint resistance even more. But yeah, aluminum is, mm, yeah. <laughs> and some far driver stuff does have brass in it, and some does not. So yeah, this is a way to cut costs, and that's all that is. You know, it's it's a uh, value engineering. It still works, but it doesn't work as well as it would. And in that regard, Vodol has this beat in every possible way. Uh, better copper buses, uh, better standoff placement, all that stuff is significantly better there than it is here. Uh, on this board, you do have a temp sensor, so it's right there, one of them, that's it. There should be like another one down here at least, and there's just one. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to see that be better. Um, it's a reasonably okay-ish power stage, but they made compromises on it because of their design choices. So, um, it's okay-ish. <laughs> it's better than KL Moto by a long shot, but is it as good as Vodol? Uh, no, <laughs> it's not. Vodol did a way better job. Uh, is it as good as the EBMX? Oh, hell no. Not even close. Um, you know, uh, Vesk, uh, Trampa stuff is, of course, really good. Uh, let's see, uh, like, uh, the stuff coming from Nucular, again, that's really good, or pretty good. That's probably about equivalent to, like, say, EBMX's. Uh, so, yeah, this is a less good power stage. It's somewhere between Vodol and KO Moto, which completely sucks. Um, yeah, and Vodol is really good. It's really good. So you can only go a little bit better than that, and there's some stuff that is a little bit better than that. But this isn't it. This is... This is less than Vodol by a good bit. Uh, so yeah, uh, some aspects of it I like, some aspects of it are... <laughs> yeah, these are definitely not good. Down to copper is definitely not good. Battery plus being compromised, that's not good. Anyway, I uh, hope to help some folks out. Uh, definitely enjoyed this teardown and picking away at all the potting. Uh, I don't know, that's cathartic. Uh, being able to do it and being able to do it well and not damage anything, yeah, I find that kind of... Uh, satisfying. Anyway, uh, yep, hope to help some folks out. Definitely enjoyed taking this thing apart. And I've got an Andy something or another 96 something coming soon. And I'll do the same thing with that.